Welcome to the KJ and Lee Podcast with your hosts, Kurt and Jacob. We are servants of Christ armed with the sword of God, the King James Bible, a microphone and biblical solutions for modern worldly problems. So get your Bibles out, grab a pen, and let's dive into the Word of God. Hi, welcome to another episode of KJ and D with your host, Kurt, Jacob, and also today we have a special guest um, going to be joining us from now on, our producer, David. Welcome, David. Hey, thank you. It's good to be here. Absolutely. And of course, uh, our most important guest that we have with us today is our, is our authorized Bible, the King James Bible, the Holy Bible, as it was originally called. And we're going to go into further discussion about the power of this translation and how it holds up to other quote-unquote translations. Uh, Brother Kurt, can you open us up? Amen. Definitely will. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for this opportunity, Father, to uh, proclaim your word via the podcast, Lord. But more importantly, Father, we just thank you, Lord, for being God and God alone, Father. And, and Father, loving us so much that you gave us uh, this, the invall- infallible, inerrant word of God for English speaking people by way of this King James Bible that we're about to discuss. Father, we just pray, Lord, that everything that we say from this point on, Lord, would bring honor and glory to you. It's in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So we are we're on the back end of a contested election right now in our nation. We don't really know what's going on. We we have a good feeling of who's going to be in office in January, but uh, we don't really know for sure because we still have a lot of court things going on. And, right. And one thing I like to do as a student of history is talk about our history as Americans. Yep. And try to draw parallels and illustrations with that with our Bible, and. What you'll hear a lot, especially from the late uh, Supreme Court Justice, uh, Miss Ginsburg, um, is that the Constitution is a living, breathing document that will change with the times. Mm. And then you have the late Justice Scalia, who said, in fact, the, the, the exact opposite of that, that this is a literal document. It is, he even said to counteract her, he said, actually, this is a dead document. Mm. Period. They wrote it. This is it. The end. Mm. Kind of like um, I'm saved. Amen. And uh, the Bible is God's word. Amen. I believe it. The end. No. The Bible is God's word. The end. Right. Amen. 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 So the Constitution and the Bible are literal documents. The law that guides our lives to help us govern ourselves. Yes. And if we alter or change those documents, it seems like that rule of law is going to falter. Yes. So we have a few translations that, um, and and Brother Kurt put together this study for us. Thank you very much. Um, um, Is it the preface or the the introductions to other Bibles that will tell you straight up that they are flawed? Yes. Yes, absolutely. And and it's, it's amazing to me how... Uh, and, and let me say, say this at the beginning because, uh, and it's a shame that I have to say this, but we're not uh, condemning anyone to hell who has an ESV or NLT or, right. or any other Bible version. Basically, what we're, we're here to do today is to, to discuss the truth of God's word and why we believe and why we defend the King James Bible as the inerrant, infallible word of God for English-speaking people and why we believe that God, if God is able to speak and the universe comes into existence, then God is also able to preserve his his word and that he can preserve his word and that he can have a complete perfect word with absolutely no errors. But it's interesting to me that the Bible versions that we're going to talk about here in a moment, the NIV, the NLT, and the ESV, they will actually say in the in the introduction of those Bibles, in the preface, in the uh, preface, or in the introduction of those Bibles, they will actually say, "Guess what, guys? We have errors." And the question that comes to my mind is, why in the world would you want a Bible that even where the authors even admit that, "Hey, there are errors in this Bible," and, and I'll just jump right into it here. The the NIV, if you read the preface of the NIV, it says it has errors. Now, this is just a part of the preface of the NIV, but you can get any NIV. You can you don't even have to buy one. You can just go to the 
local library or bookstore or whatever. And it says the following. It says, the committee has again been reminded that every human effort is flawed, including this revision of the NIV. So right there, even before you open to the very first page of Genesis, if you look at the preface of the NIV, it's telling you that this, this revision is flawed. And so why would you want anything to do with something that's flawed? Why would the authors even create something knowing that it has errors, knowing that it's not, not perfect? Now, this was done by uh, the NIV uh, Committee on Bible Translation that made this statement in September 2010. Now, this is what the King James Bible has to say as it relates to what they say about being flawed. The King James Bible says the words of the Lord are pure words. As silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. That's Psalms, the 12th chapter, and the 6th verse. Now, to show you how the NIV uh, contradicts itself, um, the NIV said in their preface that any every human effort is flawed. Now, they say human effort. Yeah, I agree with that. Every human effort is flawed. But the Spirit of God is never flawed. Amen. And the Word of God is not flawed. So they're right about that. But they also admit, they said, every human effort is flawed, including this revision of the NIV. So that's telling you right there, there was a human effort put into the revision of the NIV. They said, including the NIV. Now, this is what the NIV says in Psalms 12, 6. It says, and the words of the Lord are flawless, like silver purified in a crucible, like gold refined seven times. So if you turn to Psalms 12, 6 in the NIV, it says that the words of the Lord are flawless, but yet your introduction says that this revision is flawed. So how does that work? Can someone explain that to me? Two negatives, or a negative and a positive, kind of like an even and an odd number. And even an odd number, every time you add them or multiply them, will always be an odd number. And see, that's even the question I would pose people in these kind of conversations. If you believe that God is who he says he is, and he has the power to preserve his word... You know, and even how we use just the different writers of the Bible. Yes. You know, are you telling me that even at its base principle, the Bible is flawed because God used humans? That he doesn't have that ability or that power to use people yes. to, you know, achieve his goals? Yes. You know. Right. Well, they just don't really seem to think it through, in my opinion. I, I like to explain it to people as we have all these different uh, disciples of Jesus, especially our four gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, mm -hmm. that give a same account or their own account of the same instance. Okay, well, what were their occupations? The fishermen. Right. Uh, well, they were, we had several different people with different occupations. Yeah, some were tax collectors. Tax collectors yeah. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, let's, let's take um, just a car accident. You have, let's say you have an Army veteran, you have a medical doctor, and you have, um, a construction worker, they all see the accident. Mm -hmm. They're all going to see things that they know about that they're familiar with. Amen. Amen. And they're going to recount that story the way they saw it right. from their perspective so they can reach out to somebody else that can understand it from their way. True. Amen. True. Better Amen. than if you understand the construction worker better than you understand the doctor or vice versa, yeah, that story is going to get through to you. That parable is going to get through to you better. It's right. You relate right. to. Yeah, absolutely. Amen. There's even the question of that kind of stuff. If you're going into something, that just might be my personal opinion. Knowing that it's going to be flawed, what's the point of doing it in the first place? Right. Amen. You know? I, I agree with you totally. Why am I going to put effort into something that I know is going to be flawed? That, that does makes no sense to me. No, not at all. It, it, and so I, I don't understand that. And, it, and you have the, the NLT, the New Living Translation. It actually says the same thing. But, but here's, the, here's the thing. All of these translations, including the NIV, the NLT, and the ESV that we're going to talk about in a moment, they all try to pull down the King James Bible at the same time that they're because they will make statements like no translation is perfect. And, and, and sure, that, sure. And they're trying to include the King James in there, too. They're saying, you know what? We're not perfect, but those guys over there aren't, aren't perfect either. And so listen to what the NLT says. What does the L stand for again? Living? Living. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have other words for it, but I'm going to leave it alone here. So very quickly, even yes, sir. just even almost reposing that question where I'd honestly have an honest question for these people, you know, not ugly, not anything like that. But the question almost be, do you believe that God is who he says he is? 
Like, do, do, you, do you have the amount of faith to believe that if God wanted his word preserved, he could do that? Amen. You know, as Amen. it's listed in scripture, you, you almost seems like a lack of faith there to me. But I, I guess that can almost get into deeper issues there, so I digress. No, that that's a very good point. I mean, what is what is easier? Is it easier to make something out of nothing by speaking it? Or is it easier to preserve your word throughout the ages for thousands of years and have it passed down from generation to generation? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and so this is a, a question about whether or not God is able to preserve his word. And this is a side note before I go back to the NOT, but you can ask anyone who is not King James Bible only, if you ask them um, what is a perfect translation of the word of God, I guarantee you they will all tell you it doesn't exist. They will all tell you that there is no perfect, complete word of God. And and that amazes me because I'm thinking then, well, if you believe that there's, how would you know it if you saw it? Yeah. If you believe that there's no perfect translation, there's no perfect preserved word of God in existence, how would you even know? How would you even recognize it if you saw it? Because we are saying that the King James Bible is the preserved word of God for English speaking people. What is it about the King James Bible that makes you say, no, it's not complete. No, it's not preserved. No, it has errors. What makes you say that? Mm-hmm. And, and so it amazes me. You I've got a, me. I've got a coworker and especially working remote, it's even more difficult to be a spiritual person in the workplace. And most, I'm working remote right now. Mm-hmm. And in my living room office, you know, um, I, I work, talk to my other associates in our, in our, in our uh, e-meetings. And we can break out and we can have our own discussions away from everybody else. And we, do, we have spiritual discussions. And I let her know what my verse of the day is every day. And we talk about it and how it applies to our life. And how it applies to her life or my life. And we can talk about, you know, what we can call each other out by name in our prayers. And, and we'll... We, Amen. we can rely on each other to pray for each other immediately. We know that the other person is going to do that. Amen. And, you know, she goes, she recognized immediately that I was quoting scripture out of the King James Bible. And she told me immediately that she, she actually uses the King James Bible for her Bible study. Mm-hmm. But not for her worship, mm-hmm. where her church is. Interesting. And I, I left it at that. Yeah. I, I have no judgment on that. That's not for me. Right. To right. judge, especially since she does, she is rooted with the King James Bible. Amen. Amen. But I, I, just, I do find it interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I had a, a coworker, too, who um, I asked him what Bible did he use. This was years ago, by the way, uh, former coworker. I asked him what Bible did he use at his church uh, because I told him we use the King James Bible and we use that only. And he said, oh, well, we use all types of versions. And he said it as though it was a feature or something that was valuable that they're so diverse that we use the ESV, the NIV, the NLT. And I said, interesting. I said, so do you have, does your pastor have everyone stand up and read from Scripture before he begins his sermon? He says, yes, uh, we do. And I said, well, how does that work? If you're reading out of the King James, the person next to you is reading out of the NLT, the person next to them reading out of the ESV, how does that sound when you have the congregation reading different words out loud and how does that even work? How does how are you even able to comprehend this? And then my former coworker told me, "Oh, you know, look at the time. I got something else to do." Yeah, really. And and, and that was this is a, a a true discussion that I had with him, and and I was just asking a question. You know, if everybody has their own version, how does that even work when you read it out loud? There's your modern day Tower of Babel. Yeah, right there. Yeah, they were babbling right there. But uh, to go on to the the introduction of the NLT, th- this is how. Part of the Bible Translation Committee, July 1996, this is part of what they said in the NLT. They said, as we submit this translation of the Bible for publication, we recognize that any translation of the scriptures, including KJV, is what they're hinting at, is subject to limitations and imperfections. I mean, can can you believe that? that? Now, they're admitting that, hey, we submit this translation of the Bible, but you know what? It's limited and it's imperfect, as all translations are. Once again, trying to throw the KJV under the bus along with everybody else. Absolutely. Can't beat them. Drag them under the bus with you. Yep. And and here's the thing. They say that we recognize that the... the, Oh, well, let me read a little further here after it says that it's subject to limitations and imperfections. It says anyone 
who has attempted to communicate the richness of God's word into another language will realize it is impossible to make a perfect translation. Do you see that? That is in their preface. It is impossible to make a perfect translation. Now, this is what my King James Bible says about impossibilities. My King James Bible says, but Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Amen. 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 And hallelujah to that. I don't even need to add anything to that. That's, That's right. That takes care of itself right there. So what are you doing? Are you making these translations under the power of man? Because if so, then we're in agreement. Jesus is in agreement because Jesus said in Matthew 19, 26, with men, this is impossible. So Jesus is in agreement with you there. But with God, all things are possible. Gentlemen, any uh, comments on that? Mark 9, 23, Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Amen. Amen. You just got to believe. Amen. Amen. It's all about faith. And the Lord gives us that faith. So um, it's amazing. And, it, and it's also amazing to me that uh, Matthew 1926 the new living translation version it says jesus looked at them intently and said humanly speaking it is impossible but with god everything is possible so once again you have a bible a fake bible translation uh that says one thing in the in their gospel and then says another thing in their intro yeah, and it's almost very revealing of them as individuals you know where the own their own Bible they're translating says those kind of things, but clearly don't seem to believe them. Yes, yes, absolutely. And and there have been some authors, I can't think of a gentleman right now, he may have been one of the translators involved in the NIV effort, I'd have to go back and check, where he later came back and regretted that he had anything to do with translations that weren't of, uh, that weren't of the, the King James Bible. It's pretty amazing. Let me see if I can hit upon one more here now. The English Standard Version, the English Standard Version, to be honest with you, gentlemen, it needs its own segment, brother. It needs its own segment because the English Standard Version has a lot of stuff going on. But I'm going to go ahead and, and read to you the preface or the introduction to the uh, English Standard Version. I'm not even sure if I can get through this first sentence. It says, to God's honor and praise. We know, this is an ESV, English Standard Version, we know that no Bible translation is perfect or final. We know that no Bible translation is perfect or final, but we also know that God uses imperfect and inadequate things to his honor and praise. <laughs> and so, I, you know, that, that that's amazing that they say we also know that God uses imperfect and inadequate things to his honor and praise and that no Bible translation is perfect. This is what my King James Bible says in Psalm 1830. As for God, his way is perfect. Amen. Period. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all that trust in him. So it says right here, the way of the, uh, of the Lord is perfect in Psalms 1830. But here in the ESV, it says that no Bible translation is perfect or final. And the reason that I say that the ESV deserves its own time, because the ESV, out of many other Bible translations, tried its best to be just like the King James. Because not just two, two just as recently as two years ago, the ESV tried to come out with a final version of the ESV. But they said there is no final version. But they just said there is no final version. Right <laughs> so there. it's amazing. Like I said, the ESV and, and its translators, they just need their own segment, uh, 15, 20 minute segment, because there's so much going on there. And, and, and this is not to say that those people are not, uh, I hate to almost use this word, sincere. But at the end of the day, sincerity is, is not what gets you into, the, into heaven. That's right. It's That's the right. grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and believing on him that gets you to, to heaven. You can be sincerely wrong. And God's not going to say, oh, you were sincerely wrong. I'm going to let you in. No, you guys still got to come. If you're not covered in the blood, you're not getting in. And so um, having said that, once again, um, not trying to uh, cast aspersions upon anyone else who's using some other 
Bible versions, but we just we just love the Word of God, and we love others, and we want our especially the lost, but even <laughs> even more important to a lot of degrees, we want our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ to know the truth Amen. about God's Word, and it's very important for us to know the truth of God's Word, and this is the only reason that that we're sharing this information is because in the very forward of those other Bibles, it says that they're flawed that it's impossible and it just totally contradicts even what it says within their own uh, man-made yeah. Bible versions. And, if, and that's all I got to say about that. Amen. Uh, and if um, somehow, let's say you ended up by accident or unknowingly with a counterfeit $50 bill to you, that spins all the same as a regular $50 bill. You don't right. know the difference. That's right. That's at right. that point. That's right. That's unless right. you've been told differently, or unless you know better. And again, not begrudgingly, but these other Bibles are technically counterfeits. And mm-hmm. by definition, counterfeit means a fraudulent imitation of something else or a forgery. Yes. Sure. And we don't know the true purpose of why these Bibles were, were created by the men who uh, translated them. But by definition, they technically are our forgeries and counterfeits. Yes. Sure. And, and to Brother Kurt's point earlier, that's even biblical on the, the sincerity of something, not really always getting you that far. You know, in Matthew seven twenty one through 23, mm-hmm. it says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which yes. is in heaven. Yes. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Yeah. And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. Amen. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Never knew Depart you. from me, Depart. ye that work iniquity. Amen. Amen. Excellent. That's very good. Producer Dave, I love it. Yeah. I love it. Love it. Amen. And uh, to, before we wrap up, we're going to, again, uh, agent or student of history here. Mm-hmm. I love looking up biblical history, not only for our country, but for Western civilization, I believe is important as well. Yes. Um, one of uh, yeah. one of the most important people in Western Civ modern history would be Prime Minister Winston Churchill. Yes, true. Yes, yes. Um, now, he may not have been the best man, mm-hmm. but he was the best man for the job at the time. Yes. And even uh, as flawed as he was, and he was a, you know, a relatively mm-hmm. good man, uh, mm-hmm. he did have this quote really quick. The scholars mm-hmm. who produced this masterpiece, speaking of the King James Bible, he referred to it as a masterpiece, Amen. Amen. are mostly unknown and unremembered, mm-hmm. but they forged an enduring link, literary, literary and religious, mm-hmm. between the English-speaking people of the world. Yes. That's pretty important. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. The yes. fact that that man understood that this is... A masterpiece yes. to unite all English speaking yes. people. Yes. Obviously the King James Bible doesn't yeah. apply to Mandarin. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. But but it, it's still though people have to realize that today English is the language of commerce. Two thousand years ago Greek was the language of commerce. Right. That's why the New Testament was written in Greek. It, um, when Jesus was hung on the cross, uh, they had an inscription above his head in three languages Hebrew for the Jews, Latin for the Romans, and it was also written in Greek for the Gentiles. That was the lingua franca of the day. And now today, the language of commerce is English, primarily promulgated by the Internet. Over 90 percent of the Internet is in English. Wow. And so people are learning English. You could get you a job almost anywhere in the world in a non-speaking, non-English speaking country as an English teacher because people are desperate to learn English and the internet has propagated a lot of that because the internet was invented in good old USA, you know. So, um, the English speaking country of this this country, USA, sends out more missionaries than any other country. Second country is uh, I think it's still South Korea that may have changed, but but there are more English speaking missionaries sent out more so than any any other. Uh, uh, language uh, of missionary that sent out to preach the gospel. So it is very incumbent upon us to defend this King James Bible that's been tried and tested, and, and, and tried and tested, has stood the test of time for over over four hundred years. And now today we have four hundred plus English translations. Yeah. D- does God need four hundred different ways to say one thing? We only have one constitution. That's right. Amen. And you know what? God's an exclusive God. We only have one way to heaven. Period. That's right. That's right. 
<laughs> so, you know, are we going to make 400 different ways to, to go to heaven? Why do we need 400 different English translations? God has already given us his word. Amen. And see, I think that's where it even comes back to, you know, the prince of the power of the air. If there's any yes. one thing the devil would want to muddy and confuse as much as he possibly could, it would be the word of God. Amen. Producer Dave, you're absolutely right. All right. I got one more quote and I got something special for us. And this is uh, from a very controversial president in our history um, when he was elected and also today um, being rewritten in our history books. This hearsay, now, right? Um, the book or that book, again, referring to the King James Bible. Yes, sir. That book, sir, is the rock upon which our republic rests. So there's there's a lot of people out there, Democrat, Republican, Libertarians, whatever said, oh, separation of church and state. Well, that was a personal letter. That's not actually in the, in uh, in our nation. No. Yes. But uh, that's not our law, yes. separation of church and state. There's no such thing. Yes. But it is the foundation of our republic, period. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Our democratic republic, mm-hmm. not a democracy. Republic. Correct. Yes. Correct. All right. So before we dismiss in prayer really quick, uh, I'm going to ask each other a couple quick questions. Amen. All right. Um, Brother Kurt. Hey, man. Um, according to the scriptures, do you know what time of day Adam was created? Oh, wow. You caught me off guard. That's uh, a curveball right there. Yeah, yeah. You threw me a, a curveball there. I am not prepared to answer that question. Do I get it's a multiple okay. choice? I have the answer for you. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, man. Okay. A little before Eve. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, I can't dispute you there. Hey, Amen. <laughs> and uh, David. Oh, no. What kind of car did the disciples drive? I've got no idea. You're a Honda man. You should know this. I, I know this one, unfortunately. It's a Honda. <laughs> it's a Honda? <laughs> yeah, they were all in one accord. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Brother Kurt. Oh, no. Now, who was the biggest sinner in the Bible? I do not know the answer to that question. Who was the biggest sinner in the Bible? Oh, it's, it's Moses. How's why, that? Why oh, Moses? he broke all Ten Commandments at once. <laughs> okay, there it is. <laughs> Wow, okay. <laughs> All right, last but not least, not least. Oh, when was the first, what was the first meat mentioned in the Bible? First meat. Um, the, um, Eve was Adam's help meat. Oh, there it okay. is. Very oh, good. Nice. That's a great answer. Yeah. All right, well. But that's wrong. This, this, this. <laughs> yeah, of course. It was when Noah took Ham into the ark. Oh, there it is. There oh, it is. wow. There you go. Okay. And with that, we thank need you. To, we thank need you. The end. <laughs> uh, David, can you take us out, sir? Hey. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for uh, this opportunity, dear Lord. And we pray that it might, you know, help illuminate or help any understanding, dear Lord. Yes, pray Lord. Be with us. Uh, Throughout the day, that our thoughts and our actions would be brought into accordance of you, that we'd be, you know, that wise as serpents and harmless as doves, yes, Lord, Lord. would be edifying to you, and that we, we would show others your love through us. Yes, uh, we love you, and probably sing in your holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you. Amen. Amen. Thank you for tuning in to today's edition of KJ and Me. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to email us at kgnd at gmail.com or send us a message on anchor.fm forward slash kj dash the. And a special thank you to the Abbott family and Reach Ministries for their music used on this podcast. We hope you have a blessed day, and we'll see you next time. See you